<laughs> Say goodnight, crazy. So, uh, this is DexTrader.com, and this is the Forex Forecast. Uh, it's probably going to be the last time I call it the Forex Forecast on this meeting today. Um, we are taking on a, a whole new solution of how we look at the market and how we uh, deal with people and how we work with people. We, we started this process, uh, and, I'll, and I'll get to introductions here in a second, but we started this process um, last year of creating our members and our customers, uh, our investors, if you will, um, as the most important factor of this. And, and you still are. You'll always be the most important factor of, of DEX signals, DEX trader, DEX indicators, anything DEX, anything Our City Investments, anything Max Farrell, to be honest with you. Um, I'm tired of the big companies trying to take advantage of the little guy. I've tried to fight as much as I possibly can, but we get beat up a lot, a lot. If I, I could sit and tell you stories all day long on how big we get beat up. But what matters to us is that we take the shiner, but we learn from it. And it's okay because there's a, there's a lot of fighting back now that we can do because knowledge is the key component in everybody's success. If you don't know what you're doing, you're only going to be successful for a short period of time. So with that said, gives you a little bit of a tremor of what's about to happen today. I'm joined by Mike Ficka, who is the epitome of success within our system of how he has come through the network um, from as just a current individual, just like you guys, and turned himself into a partner. Not because he gave us a bunch of money or convinced us that he could cure cancer or anything, but just from hard work and determination. Mike Ficka, thank you so much for being here today. Good morning, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? So, Mike, when you first started with us, you, you worked, I mean, we had questions. You, you sent me a very long email of, of concerns, and you wanted to see certain things. So I, I can't believe you still have that email. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I never let that email go. That's my dollar on the wall, man. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's the moment, because people were doing successful things uh, up to that point, of course. But I wanted to see if anybody would take charge of what they wanted you know i have i have and i don't want to say this too many times out loud but i have this m mantra of that if somebody has balls enough to ask i'm willing to listen um whether or not they get it, it's a whole other thing but mm. i'm willing to listen and i could shuff my ego to the side just enough to where we can uh, we can talk and that that's important you got to be able to listen to people and their concerns and their processes if not you're going to fail and listening to you and other people within the networks, it, it made sense. So that's where we're at. But you climbed up through that process, through the muck and the mire of trying to figure stuff out. So you actually see, have seen us grow as well. Some of you that are in the room, Tim W., uh, Paul, Paul Sr., um, some other people that are in the network, you may have seen us grow throughout the process of what we've done um, and how far we have come from just a sing single signals network to the the empire we're slowly building right now. And by the way, I am your father. <laughs> Luke. Luke, I am your father. Um, that makes me Darth Vader. That's upsetting. Yeah. No. Um, but <laughs> it's either way. But you have seen how far we have come within the process, and I, I think it's it's pretty far, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, since I started. And you know some of the secrets now about what's about to happen, and how far do you think we're going to be able to go now? The sky's the limit, as they yes, say. Yes, it is. The sky is the limit. But I got to tell you, the sky is uh, is the starting point in our world right now. That's how far. They, they might not be able to handle the truth, though, Max. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Well, the truth is, well, they say it will always set you free, uh, mm -hmm. but the lie will keep you protected. <laughs> oh, well. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to omit things today. Omit, oh, not omit. But I'm not going to omit things today. But you will get a sense of what this industry and what this the, the markets and what the world has become, and you're going to get a sense for that today. And this isn't some you know pass you off to you know upsell you into something else. I'm I'm always transparent within the industry, and some hate me for it, some love me for it, some can't stand the fact that you know the truth hurts. But it well it definitely will give you an understanding of what's about to happen. So let's get started. 
of course, the earnings and risk disclaimer is a, a big thorn in my side. It's like not drinking the Windex kind of stuff. But the common sense value of people within the industry is sometimes put to the side because you think you hear somebody talk and they're learned and, or they're I'm, I'm definitely not learned. I speak in <laughs> I don't have very good grammar. So that's let's just say that. But I'm, I'm an average person. So I'm I'm here to tell you that the risk that you have to take on is, is, is anything. Stepping off on the sidewalk in the streets a risk. But the idea, there you go, uh, it's all about education. And that's what we're here to do. Now, what I do can be done. What you do can be done and, you know, uh, um, and duplicated. But in some cases, you may not. You may, you may fall on your ass. And that's what you have to kind of, that, that's your risk. You know, knowing who you are and knowing what you can risk is up to you. Some of us don't know that. And that is the biggest lesson you need to learn first before doing anything else. That's why we always put it in the front. We don't put it in the back. Okay. All right. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about, hey, where the hell did everything go on the website? <laughs> you know, so Dex Trader did take a little bit of a revamp. Now, I've been trying to stage it in, right? Giving you guys little bits and pieces and things that are building on and things that are taking that we are, we like I said, it was going to be done by Monday the 24th and it, for the most part, it's done. It's 90 something percent done. It's just sitting in the back offices right now waiting to be launched into the process. And I wanted to make sure everything was working. I've let some into it. I left some out of it. Um, but everybody who's moved over, you got your profiles, you got your stuff happening. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. Um, we're going to talk about Nadex spreads today, yippee, because this is going to start a series that we're going to begin to work with, with when, within one of our evergreen webinars about Nadex spreads and the truth behind spreads, the truth behind trading. Um, we're also going to talk about education Forex system as well. So this is pretty huge. You know, we're going to talk about, you know, the ups and downs of, of this system. And we're also going to talk about, I won't say our friends just yet, but I will say a company that we get nothing from. Remember, we don't take affiliation. We don't take commissions, uh, but Forex.com. They are a necessity within the market. Um, I think them and MB Trading as well, but we'll be work, we'll be bringing them on board uh, here shortly over the next couple of weeks. Um, but I wanted to focus most of my attention on Forex.com. These guys, Gain Capital, are the ones that took over uh, all of FXCM stuff. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, that company, they they just recently lost all their the the regulational companies over here, the SF or CFTC and SEC and all those guys uh, sort of attacked them and kicked them out of the country. <laughs> they can't have U.S. citizens anymore as clients. So it's pretty bad. You know, you F over some people and you get you get ripped off. You know what I mean? So you got you got to um, you got to do right by people. If not, you're going you're going to get caught and you're going to you're, you're going you're going to go bye bye. So let's get started. So Dex Trader has had a few things moved, and we talked about this, uh, you know, up to up to this video. But there has been some movement around, and I want to take you over to the website, and I want to kind of show you just real quickly where sort of everything is still at, um, and why we've done it this way. Um, let me put you on desktop. There we go. All right. So here we are. Um, originally, you had a whole bunch of different things here in this main menu, but what I done is I took this main menu that was here before and put it up here. So this is still the old menu that was down here so if you have if you can't remember where everything is at it's still way up here just for right now it'll still lead to the same things your dextrator 2.0 all that stuff um, under signals now the base signals will be the dex trader 2.0 there'll be some easier ways to know what's what and we're going to get uh from under signals you'll have your training tabs which really are still i'm still finishing off some of that this morning just attaching stuff your profile system is here, so you can see your profile. You can log in. You see Trader's Feed. Uh, if you're buying in for the first time, you know members will be able to come on and say getting started, where they go, and all that stuff. The webinars, frequently asked questions, and of course the prices. Now, with that in mind, the prices on the site, okay, we have we have done some a la carte, okay, because we know that not everybody wants to spend 297 bucks a month. We got it. We understand. You can always come in for free. And do all the trader series stuff that we have. It's kick ass. There's a lot of trader series stuff in there. There's going to be even more. There's going to be a looking left. There's going to be the forex.com. There's going to be a lot of little things in there that we're going to be working with. Okay. So 
not everybody wants to pay that amount, but we do have an a la carte process, so that's that's pretty powerful as well. Okay. Um, in the series of changing the website, there was a lot of call for, hang on one second. There was a lot of call for um, the profile system to be there and to have that communication. So all that stuff is still there. We still have the availability um, to have the to have the system. I'm sorry, I just got distracted by the chat. Um, but we still have all the information for training. We still have the chat rooms, and we still have the areas for support. And this is a this is a big thing for everybody. Down down below here, here let me make this page smaller just a little bit so you can see it. Down right here, you definitely you all see this. Okay, so you fill out the information and you start the chat, and this will take you over to Brian or Amy or Paul, who's usually in that room in there, and they can help you find out where any of this stuff has gone to, what what it does and all that. Now, we're not going to worry about going through like what the pro point system is and what you can use them for and all that kind of stuff. I really just want you to focus on where are your signals and where is your training. And that's that's the big one. And the fact that we have a la carte now um, for that process. Okay. Um, lastly, with Dex Trader. By the way, we listen to everybody, Max. What's that? that was another we listened to uh, our our investors on that on that sheet. Oh yeah, absolutely, right. That was big. I mean, that was a big uh, move we made. And Mike, how, you know, on that note, how many how many companies have you ever known to listen to the customers to that extent? Not, not very. I mean, none unless it's yeah. a unless it's you know big uh, you know cars or 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 food or something like right. that. Uh, never in trading. Well, I, I didn't I didn't think so either, and I and I, I haven't been able to I don't really look too much anymore because I don't bother with our competition as much because I've seen the type of games that they play, um, but it it is something that we had to grow with and to make it e even easier because we have Mike we have a lot of people coming. Mm -hmm. We are about our our analysts tell us that with the amount of information that we're going to be providing and have within the signal network in an industry that has $5.3 trillion a day go through it, and the amount of people that do trade in what we call the retail trade market um, and the novice trade market, we're gonna, we're gonna gather a lot of people. And that's where, that's where a lot of um, our fears come from as well, is that how many is too many people? Should we have created a completely different system you know, to, to house this, to, to keep everything on? But no, we want, because you're all traders. You're all traders in our mind and you're all traders within life and we needed to be able to focus in one, one area for everybody. And that's why we've sort of put, we were originally going to have it on Dex, Dex Effects World for just for the Forex people, but with spreads and the algorithm and everything else, I wanted it all here in one spot. So like, we do I have can interject some... something real quick, Max. Um, sure. I, uh, you know, I'm a YouTube junkie. So I've been uh -huh. scouring, looking for how, how to trade Forex and how to do this and how to do that. Very few things, and if I and if I did find something, it was there was a cost involved. Okay, mm -hmm. so I am super excited not only to learn from what you're about to teach me, but it's all free for everybody. I mean, it's yes. it, it, I can't believe it. You know what I mean? Yes. It, for something like that, you know, and and people always want to know how to do things, but they don't. They really don't want to pay. I mean, it's it's the same. Right. You know. It's it's unbelievable how much information you're going to have in that little thing about how to trade forex, and I can't find it anywhere on the net or or the uh, YouTube without without some kind of payment or you know come with us and and pay four hundred dollars a month and we'll we'll give you everything. I'm like no. <laughs> no. Well, there's there, there are there are places out there, uh, and and I'll be honest with you, there's there's plenty of little you know um, is it Pip Factory or whatever the heck it was or something like that. That have questions and answers about what forex is, but it's usually in a in a in a written format. It's written out. It's not really in videoization. Um, it's not really. It doesn't give you the the details you need. They give you a bunch of jargon. They give you right. a bunch of what all this stuff is, but they don't show you. They don't they don't sit down and show you. And that's and I think that's where you're related over is that we're going to show you. I right. have a unique way of training, I guess. Right. Um, you, you I'm, not a, like, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a reader, Max. As you know that yeah. about me. If you show me, yeah. and I'm I'll I'll be able to duplicate that forever. You know what I mean? That's I'm, what I'm I was always that. worried about back in the day. You know, um, when I first started, I'm like, can I see a live trade? Can I see a trade? Can I see something? And and now well, that we're able to do it. 
It's you, great. You needed you needed validation. You didn't need to see it being done. You just needed validation that it worked. Sure. And that, and that was that was okay. That's okay because the validation that it works here is you following the paces and going through it. That's what I told you a long time ago. Because mm -hmm. what I do is different. That the risk disclaimer is there for freaking reason, right? Sure. But the idea of what we've created on created on Dex Trader is it's now going to have a home to where people are going to come in and be able to learn. Now, most companies, most of these little networks that you see, these big gurus, they're all like, I'm going to teach you how to trade it for free where nobody else is going to teach it. And then, of course, you get in there and it's $5,900 you know, $5, to go to their yeah. seven-day course or whatever it is, right? And Wonderful. you know what? Transparency here, folks. We are a marketing firm, but also a, a trading network and an, in, an investment firm. And yes, we do have problems. But it's not going to be the loss leader product. Can you trade with what I'm about to teach you? And the answer is yes. I'm going to show you little strategies and little things on how to trade within that within that series of forex that you can go in and learn, right? Even on the free side of going in, you'll you'll learn some things, just like I did with Trader's Mind. Trader's Mind wow. has a five minute trading system in there that's been there the entire time. Hasn't upgraded, hasn't changed. It's always been the same double stochastic process that's been there for years always been there everybody's like if you put that out everybody's going to take it nobody's going to come to your company uh okay whatever <laughs> it's been two years now i've added out there and guess what folks people still come they still buy signals they still get other stuff but how many people call me and write me and say they've learned so much from that from traders mind series and again i got to do it justice i have to revamp it i have to bring it up to date i have to show you some more things in there and that's basically what we're going to be doing here with the Forex version of that, is we're going to be showing you different ways to protect yourself and protect yourself within that network. So that's that's what I'm really excited about. But that's all going to be in the house. That's all going to be in the network. And we'll get to that here in a second. All right, let's talk about spread. You've seen this graphic the other day. But I wanted to reiterate because I did get a lot of emails. I get some phone calls on people that were still a little bit confused on why 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 wouldn't we just trade spreads all day long and the the big thing is is that binaries don't really need a lot of volatility you don't need to have a lot of movement to win a binary in fact you don't want a lot of movement right you want it to go in a direction for a little bit you want it to you know you don't want it to move right i'm sorry if if you get into a trade and here's here's your expiry or here's your here's your price that you want to be under and you're in for a sell right and here's your expiry. You don't want this thing going like this, right? <laughs> because it, it, these are little heart attacks. It's like, oh, I'm dying. Oh, okay, I'm a winner. Oh, I'm a, I'm a loser. Oh, I'm winning. You know, so, and what usually happens in, in most trades, right? You get to this point and you're like, this is this is that heart attack zone, right? Because if, if a company is reputable, now overseas binaries, what happened during this time? You always went, yep, <laughs> you always yep. lost, right? It always happened, right? Because that's the way they designed the program. But in the real world, this last little bit here is volatile. And why is that? This last little bit of the time period, the last 10, 15 minutes, five minutes of to the top of the hour to any one of these expiries is a volatile amount of time because there's a lot of people trading. And they trade at certain times to get done at certain times. Those top of the hour margins, those top of the hour marks, besides, there's no sound? I hear Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, fine. Can everybody else hear me? Okay. Sorry, David. I'm, might be something. Refresh your screen, possibly. Um, but there is a lot of volatility that happens in those last 10, 15 minutes we call the red zone. Uh, it's you, David. Thanks a lot, Mike. Um, <laughs> Because there's a lot of people doing the same thing you're doing. They're speculating. They're thinking, should I get out? Should I stay in? Should I move? And then, of course, there's the bigger companies that are like, let's make it drop just a little bit because all those people that got in for a buy here, if you get it really close, they're all going to get out or going to hit your stop losses. And then it's going to make the market. Everybody's then going to buy in and it's going to go up. And then we'll make a whole bunch of money in this move. And that's that's a relative theory that happens with a lot of the bigger companies that trade, some of these bigger networks. Because they do want to move the market. Because it is about that tension that you feel in that last few minutes. So knowing that you're in a pool of other, 
of other traders and knowing that there needs to be movement spreads becomes a very um, a, a good thing to be able to know how to use as a, as a backup as a as a loss not a lost leader but a uh, just it's a, it's a it's a backup plan it's a plan B in the process right now binaries have a higher risk okay but they have the lower rewards right you're usually spending 80 75 bucks to make 25 or 20 bucks right where spreads you can be one to one for every dollar <coughs> right usually five to one four and a half to one on the binaries spreads you can sometimes be one to one depending on which ones you get and in some cases in some cases you be one to three or one to four you could be on the other side you could be on that positive ROI even right out of the spread so the loss okay we, we, we you would refer to as like an OTM over here really spreads only have two modes ATM and OTM that's basically it ITM is sort of redundant in the process but um, and I'll show you what I mean later on in spreads training but in in this video today in this in this webinar that we're doing today I just needed to kind of go over quickly some of the features right you don't have as many inventory as you have in binaries you have in spreads so you would think well I better I better I, I, won't, I won't be able to trade as much you can trade you could still trade you could still do this you could still take the spreads but you're going to want to pick your times a little bit more right so in binaries you want to trade less because the more you touch the market the more opportunity you have to lose but in trading on the spreads you can actually trade a little bit more because there is less risk and less overhead on, on the risk side itself you can actually trade a little more but you're going to have to put up more to be able to trade Does that makes sense <coughs> in binaries you trade <coughs> excuse me if you trade one trade you're putting up 80 bucks right that's as if you have an 80 20 process and this is your risk so you're trading 80 dollars right to win that 20 bucks in a in a in a spread depending on where because a spread is always a box right and the box is always what the <coughs> excuse me the vertical lines is time right and the horizontal lines are price right because the price goes up and it goes down so if if this is true this is the box right so this is then considered the ceiling and this is considered the floor of this box because what they do is that they give you a price right 1.0100 right and then this would be 1.0 let's say zero 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 right so this would be a difference of 100 pips right you getting that Mike does that make sense yes okay so this is what they refer to as a spread and you'll see a spread on Nadex designed to say you know 1.0100 and it'll kind of it'll kind of look like this or something like to that to that effect it'll have uh, just but it'll be it'll be a dash and it'll it'll have it'll be actually like this zero 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 like that right and then it'll have an expiry say 3 p.m right and that's what it'll kind of look like so it'll say when it's in between here depending on where you get it at now once you go to get it it's going to have this is, there's, some, it, there's some more diversity with this and I want to show you later on all that diversity but what I'm telling you right now is that depending on where you get it at let's say if you if you're getting in for a cell right or a direction down where do you want to buy where do you want to be at within this box when you're about to buy into this process about to buy the sell right when you're about to purchase a sell where do you want to be closest to do you want to be closer to the ceiling or closer to the floor Mike the ceiling okay that's right Jim you got it right perfect you want to be closer to the top right because the closer you are to the top because if you're here right and if every pip is one dollar okay if every pip is one dollar and this is a hundred pips in between if you're in the middle you're at 50 50 right you're at fifty dollars because your risk is whatever is the opposite of your direction so if I get in here the opposite of my direction from here to the ceiling is 50 pips right how much how much do I how much do I have to risk Jim Mike anybody oh, fifty dollars Fifty bucks, right? That's a fifty dollar risk. But on the other hand, let me see if I can get back here. There we go. The other hand, if I get if I, if I purchase up here and I'm at let's say 
from 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 the opposite of my direction. This is twenty pips. You know, is that that's twenty dollars, right? In most cases, and you buy you, right. You're gonna you uh, see right. No, no, but no, but listen, you you know, you don't CVG yet. Okay, you're getting in at twenty twenty dollars, right? You're getting in at twenty dollars risk, but it has a potential of what eighty. Mm-hmm. Because it can go down that that 80 pips, right? Now, will it do that all the time? No. The cool thing about the this this particular part of the process is that you when you when you put up that money, you're putting up 20 bucks, right? But you're you're buying it really good, right? You're not putting up 80, but you're putting up 20. But there are some cases. Right, that you'll have a two hundred and fifty dollar pip range. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're getting in the money or at the money, right in the middle, right? How much? If you're getting right in the middle on a two hundred fifty dollar pip range or two hundred fifty pip range, how much money are you risking to get in? Let's say you want to say it for a sell. You're risking one hundred twenty five dollars. See what I'm saying? Now, that doesn't mean you're going to lose your one hundred twenty five bucks right off the bat. If you, if it, if this expires right here how much money have you lost well you'd kind of have to know the increments but let's just say that if this is if if this is a 250 pip range it only went against you 10 pips how much money did you lose ten dollars ten dollars if it went for you for 10 pips how much money did you win ten dollars ten dollars Right. I'm sorry. I'll let the room. Let me. I'll let the room answer that. <laughs> That's okay. Mike. Mike's. Mike's here with me. Mike's learning right now too. So the cool thing is that now, if you got this 250 pip margin and this thing goes way against you, okay, it goes all the way up here. How much money did you lose when he gets all the way up here? Anybody? Can anybody tell me? 125 dollars. Joe Brickson. If you were in forex, if this was like. 200 pip move against you, whatever. Not that it would move that much. It'd be crazy, right? But if it was, you would have lost 200 pips, right? You would have lost. You would have lost your house. You would have lost that one stuff. You would have been margin called. You would have been taken out, right? Tarek J, good, perfect, right? You all got. You all get in the system here. You're figuring it out. You're seeing it. It's common sense to you now, right? Now, sometimes you might be able to get that $20 process, right? Load up CVG on this bad boy, right? Because you got the consistency, right? But sometimes. You might be taking that risk right in the middle because you don't need a lot of movement to make money, right? Because there's another additive to this process. And that's what most people don't know about. It's called premium, right? And premium is where the market price is at or the indicative price is at compared to what the contract is at, right? And it's usually in some cases, you know, 10, 15 bucks, 10, 15 pips, five pips, two pips. It all really depends. And you'll be able to see that in the training. And I'll, and I'll show you some of that stuff in the training um, about the differences on how to navigate the premium. Because this is what's going Now, you make money, some money. You don't make a dollar per pip during the premium. But you do make some, but you don't make a lot. So the big thing about trading spreads is knowing where your premium is. That's the, be- that's the big one. When things expire, right? Because in in training on spreads, you want to make sure we already know that they're very powerful, right? So they they you need they, they it needs to move. You need to have market movement to make money, right? It just can't stay in one spot. If it stays in one spot, you don't make no money, or you might even lose money after fees, right? The biggest moving times are during are during opens and closes, you know, and news, right? This makes sense. But the best way to look at these is in a long-term or a macro look, okay? And what I mean by that is that we have to sort of determine, you know, our time period. So spreads have a, a, a very useful act in our lives that we can create a very good hedging opportunity as well. And why is that? Well, because when there is movement in a market, our biggest problem is what? Speculating which way it's going to go, right? I mean, we have signals, we have processes happen, 
Let me redo this and see if I can, in fact, even do this to make it cleaner. <laughs> okay, something like that. I could have probably even done a better job of doing that one. And then we're going to take the color and change it just a little. Okay, so now if this is a two part spread, okay, so we have a top spread and a bottom spread. Now, the top spread, the box spread that we're going to use, we're going to refer to as a bull box, right? And the one below is going to be called a bear box. Why? Because if our market is usually right around in this area when we first start out, if it goes up, it's going to be bull. If it goes down, it's going to be bear. Does that make sense, Mike? Yep. Good. So... And when learning how to hedge like this, when learning the iron condor or butterflies or straddles or whatever you want to call it, you have to understand the direction where you're going to go. There's a lot of little numbers that you're going to need to know where it's at, right? So premium might be from here to here during this time. So it has to move a little bit before you get to it. And then where you're buying the bull box at compared to where the price is at, okay? So if you're buying a bull box all the way up here, but your bear box, you're buying it really good right here for a down. You know, your your numbers are off, right? You're at $125 here, but then you're only at, you know, say $40 here for risk. You see, so you kind of you have to kind of try to make this very even on either side. So the, the boxes have to be similar in risk. And that takes a little bit. Not we don't all have scanners. So I'm going to show you how to use this and how to find these very, very quickly. Because everybody's like, it's so confusing. Yes, they can be confusing. But when I'm done teaching you how to do this, you'll be able to spot this immediately. Is what people don't want you to know, that there's an easy way to spot them. <laughs> right? So the cool part about trading on a bull box, bear box, straddle here, or whatever you want to call it, an iron condor, or what have you. <clears throat> but the solution is that the market's going to come in and you're going to find and availability on picking a direction. Do you want your stronger box? So yes, you want to know what the main direction is, but does it matter what direction it goes now? You just want it to go a direction, right? Does that make sense, Mike? Yes. Okay. Now also keep in mind hedging a lot during major news times, you got to get in really, really early. You got to mm -hmm. get in when the market's just starting on that. So at seven o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon, you have to know you know, you can't get in at 257 and be like, I'm going to see if I can make a couple bucks extra in the last second. No, you got to get in early because you need movement and you want that movement happening. So if a market comes up, just so you guys understand, and you start coming into this box, you bought in the market here and here, right? So let's say the distance between here, let's just make it even, is 20 pips here and 20 pips here, right? So your 20 pips, you bought in 20 pips here and 20 pips here. So... But yet it's moved now 30 pips past your 20 pip point, right? So you got 20 pips there. So you got, you know, you got 20 pips there, but it's moved 30 pips up. So it's about a 50 pip move. In this box down here, you're minus 20 bucks, right? And in here, you're plus 30, right? So if that's the case, how much money did you make? 10 bucks, right? Now, it may not seem like a lot, okay? But if it continues to go on in this 100 to, or however many, you know, however many pips this is, this could be, you know, 100, this could be 150, this could be 250, whatever it is, however much, if it does continue on, and this is where the wishful thinking can stop, right? You could go all the way up, you could come all the way back down, you could go all the way back up again, you can make money three or four times, get in six or seven times, no. I'm going to tell you right now that however much that you risk, and this is where a lot of people forget, okay, is to keep your R value, the amount that you, your risks or reward, very simple, and keep the woulda, shoulda off of the playground, okay? Keep the I wish I coulda or maybe I shoulda out of your trading life. Trading on hedging is an opportunity to know that, hey, yeah, I, I don't feel really strong about it, but just in case it does happen to go against me, this is flipping a coin. And this could be a very good trading platform for you, 
but you need to know that, hey, it is going up and that that possibility is very strong with you. And once you begin to see that, that this is an opportunity, you know, that it is going in that direction, having a backup plan is a good idea, but you have to know when to apply that backup plan. Because Mike, if it comes up here and you see it in the positive, do you take this bottom bottom one off? Do you just go say, screw it, get, get rid of it? Because I don't need no. it anymore? No. no. Because it can come right back down. Yeah, because it can do that. It can come back down. But you have to get out of your position here. You have to know when to get out. This is what mm -hmm. everybody, you know, all the training I've ever seen from like Apex and all BTG and all these other companies, they're all like, so you keep this in and you, you keep, you let it go because you can make all your money from here and then you can come all the way back down. You can make this money from here. No, what I want to see is that you create small triggers for yourself on how much to pull out. This is where scalping and knowing when to scalp out is the best. And I usually say, once you hit your, your risk to reward value of one to one, pull your money out. Yeah. It could still continue to go. It could keep riding on. Right. Or at least create what we call even value trading which is where you do two contracts on either one, right? And once it hits a number, take one of them off, right? Sell one out. Because then you can play that risk to go up. But you might end up losing. It might end up coming back coming back down on you. And if it does hit that number again, if one bar closes out past that number you just did, then close this one out and still make your money. It's that simple. You know, and then keep it on this side. And, and if it does happen to, to come back against, you know, back into the other side, then you do the same thing. Sell one out when you get to an R1 to one value and, and take your money. Simple. But this is a trading stock right now that I just showed you in spreads. Do you need to know a direction? Anybody in the room? Anybody in the room tell me that, do you need to know a direction with this strategy I just showed you? No. Why the hell would a signals company just show you a strategy? This is the spreads version of the double stop. This is my present to all of you in the room that if you're going to look at spreads, you're going to find the spreads. Go I want you, you're going to go through spreads training. It'll be sometime. It'll be this week. I'm going to have all of the videos on here in, in, in a couple of hours, have the first part of spread training on so you can see, but I'm going to be mostly focused you know, on Forex trading. Um, but in you, and you'll see some of this trading in here, but the training that you're going to get over the week is I want you to some homework for all of you. Okay because I'm working my ass off here. You guys can put some time in too to help you figure out some of this stuff too, is that you're going to see, um, you're gonna see spreads on, on the system and they're gonna show up at certain times. You're gonna see from 7, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. they all have an expiry, right? And this is very important because this is a big one. This is an eight hour period uh, that is, that's something that you can look at, okay? And I want you to start looking at these and how they behave, getting your demo and getting their work in that, right? You're going to start doing that because once I give you a signal pack for this, that'll give you a strong indication on either side, right? So because our signal network for spreads is going to be pretty cool. Um, we already have something for Forex that works really well, uh, but you're going to see that it's going to tell you through the algorithm, it's going to tell you through the signal results on do I have a bull box and a bear box or I just have a bull box? And you'll see that on how powerful that is. And you'll see how that'll work. And it'll tell you, do I need one or do I need them both? And if I do need them both, when do I put it on? Right? Because you might get into the bull box in the very beginning and then another signal will come on and guess what that'll tell you to put on a bear box. Pretty cool, right? So you're going to get, you're going to get a, a, a huge process that, Hey, this is the time to start putting it on and it won't be for an eight hour period. It'll be for an intraday. It'll be for a one an hour, two an hour, uh, process. Pretty, pretty powerful to be able to tell you that, but I want you to learn on how to use stuff. Can you make money doing this? Yeah, absolutely. But you'll make more being able to pick one side rather than two. You'll make more. Can I say that again? You'll make more 
knowing what side to go on than you would on doing a hedge or doing a, a condor or iron butterfly or straddle or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, let me show you something else here. The act of learning how to read the signal itself, whether it be Forex or, or the spreads or the dailies or any of it, do you realize what I'm about to show you is a very well-kept secret in this market? And what scares a lot of people, like I was telling Mike before, is that the industry doesn't want to tell you these things because it's afraid that it will affect you. I'm not afraid to tell you because I know it's going to affect you. And because the effect that I want to see from you as a trader is that once you have that knowledge, you now know it's mostly on your ability to be able to trade using common sense and timing rather than an absolute knowledge, right? That you know it's going to go up because anything can happen. It can flip around on you. The, Trump can come out and say that he wants to, you know, propagate and buy Mars or something. Who knows, right? It can be anything. Anything can change this market. There's no one way to predict a direct movement all of the time. There's all these things that go against you. But I want to show you something, and I, I took a screenshot of the algorithm from, and this is not the algorithm, by the way, but I took a screenshot of one of the variant systems we use for the algorithm called Sign. <clears throat> and a sign is basically a devised process of figuring out positive or negative, right? And this is one of the, the equations we use to calculate the, uh, the positive negative SGN um, from, uh, from the variable, from, from the actual algorithm that produces the signal, right? So if you think of it that in, in, in this process, that a, what are our signals? Well, however we derive to do them and give you a, a buy mentality or a sell mentality, right? It's 50-50, right? It's right in the middle. So let's start off with that. It's right in the middle, right? You either take a buy or you take a sell. This is why it's called a binary. Even in Forex, it's still a binary kind of mentality. It's either up or down, right? You're hedging on one side or the other, right? So the concept here is, is the next thing is to figure out because we have a direction is on that direction how many pips above that area so will it, if it's if it's a positive amount of pips that you win right if you do a buy and you have plus plus one pip is that a win yeah that's a win right so that goes up into the win column but if it was a minus one pip that would be a loss. So it would be minus one in the win column, right? Which would be one in the loss column, right? Does that make sense? Yep. And it's the same thing on the sell side. You either give it a plus value if you won on the sell or a minus value if you lost on the sell. And this creates our average, right? And our average is the sum of our wins and losses on either side, right? So you're getting that. Now, what does it create as a win loss is another variable in time, which most people don't do, by the way. Most people, when they're trading Forex in, in an algorithm, they, they take a buy, right? They give you what? A stop loss. And they say, set your stop loss at a certain amount, let's just say 20 pips, right? And they tell you, okay, so you'll set your stop loss at 20 pips and you'll take your take profit at say like 20 pips. If they're smart, this is an R1 to one, right? Right, you're risking 20 pips to make 20 pips. And how do they, how do they validate whether or not they won? Is that if they hit their 20 pips, they take their money, right? Or they can scalp out in a positive pip, right? They can scalp out with 10, 15 pips, whatever it is, right? 20 pips, so even one pip, right? They get scared to get out. But that then truly just floats because you don't really know the true success rate is because what happens if they didn't scalp out? What happens if they did scalp out? Maybe it was at 27 pips 
You know, it never got to 27 pips because they their take profit would have kicked in. But maybe they took their take profit off and let it try to go further. There's all these little games people play when they're when they're trading forex. So at this point, all the weight stands on the direction, right? And the success of win loss on stop loss or take profit. That's three major variables that have to happen in order to create an average of success or, or loss. In our system, we've created a, a value on the direction, but has given it a life, a shortened life by a time period, by time, right? We'll call this time of usually one hour or 45 minutes to one hour. And we let this do this because we've noticed that when our algorithm, because now listen, this is specific to our one algorithm that we're using for the intradays, right? Granite, I'm telling you what it is. And what we use for the intradays for Nadex, we're using right now for Forex with a few other small details put in. And what we do is that we concentrate on the buy or, or in the direction and we say <coughs> for the next 45 minutes to an hour, <coughs> But when the signal fires off, have that market open. Create a stop loss to protect yourself of 20 pips. Okay. But we also show you inside how to how to trim the fat on this, right, Mike? It's called trimming the fat. Yep. And we say, we're going to teach you how to do that, you know, on you start it off right away at 20 pips on that side and do a take profit of 20 pips on the other side immediately, as soon as you put the trade on, because you it's time is the, of the essence. As soon as that signal comes out, you got to get it on. So once you get it on in Forex, now you got it on. Now you have now you have a trade on, right? It says buy, and they'll say 20 pips on the one side and 20 pips on the other. Now you can go in and look at, you know, where's the market highs and lows and where are the variances, where's the trend connection at, you know, and then you can trim this down. So sometimes you'll trim it down to like, say, 13 pips on the stop loss because if it does break this margin, you know it's going to continue on. And it's it, or if it's going to break that it's going to fall down below, you know, you're going to protect yourself. And if, if the market is like super skyrocketing and, you know, and you're going to make your money, you want to get your 20 pips, get your, get your take profit. So you can trim that in. You can even extend this. It can be like 27, 28, 29 pips, whatever. But because you you're looking at market value, you know, you know, has, has everybody gotten out right around here? And this is, creates a resistance area. You wouldn't put your take profit up here. You'd put it right here or just below here. You know, get your money before it reverses, right? So with that said, the success rate of the signals doesn't take in consideration a take profit value. It uses the time value to stop the trade. And the reason why we did this was because if a signal is, is successful, it has a plus in the pips, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's not successful, it has pips. But it wasn't about a win loss success, not success scenario for us, because that's not where it, it stopped. Now, if you wanted to just trade that alone, is, is it, is it successful? Mike, does it have, does it have profit in it? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Not a lot, not a lot for how many trades it goes. It doesn't have a lot of money that you can make just trading it straight, not even taking into consideration, just follow the signal all the way out and get off in that hour, get off in that 45 minutes. You might win some that have like 16, 17 pips in them. You might lose some that are like 17, 18 pips, but you'll win a lot that'll have like two or three pips on the win, you'll have four or five pips. You might lose like you have one or two that are like two or three pips in the loss. So you won't lose a lot, but you won't win a lot. And how do we confirm which direction to go with? Well, we, let's go back to that 50-50 scenario again, right? That 50-50 scenario of the up or the down, right? Is that if this is 50% success or failure, right? Either side of it. And this is the top side and this is the bottom side. When the algorithm plays off, if it wins, it keeps going up, right? It's on the top side of that. Once it loses, it gets closer back to that 50% line. If you fall below 50%, you're in the negative side, right? So let's just say this is 
40% and then 30% and then 20% and so forth, right? You got 60, 70, and 80%. So, oops, sorry, 60, 70, and then 80%. Is this, if, 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 the, if the algorithm's working out pretty good, give me one second. If the algorithm's working out pretty good and it's been winning and it's up like this, so it's had a few losses here and like that, and it's sitting up, say, 65, 67%. Do you follow the signal here? If this, if if a signal comes out right now here at this point and it says do a buy, you would do a buy, right? If the signal came out here and it was it was in the success rate of, say, 60, 67, 78%, or however much it would be, and it said do a sell, you would do a sell, right? But if it was down here, under the algorithm not being successful and it said do a sell what would you do anybody a buy that's right now this sounds very like rudimentary right it sounds like this is kindergarten stuff you know when it's doing good go with it when it's not doing good do the opposite right so why is it so rudimentary? Why does it sound like kindergarten stuff? Because folks, it is. Your success of being able to, I mean, it's almost like a trust factor. The only, the only thing that can never change, what is the one thing in the system that can never change because it'll, it'll screw up all the numbers. It's only one thing that can't change and that's the algorithm can't change. I can't add anything to it. I can't take anything away from it. I have to let it just do its thing. And that's what it's doing right now. It's doing its thing. So if the algorithm is working well, it's going to be in the positive. If it's not working well, now it doesn't mean that it's not working well and it's terrible algorithm it shouldn't be used or what have you. It means that for that pair and that asset, it's trading in a negative balance, right? It's trading in a negative process so you need to do the opposite which means that if i wanted to i could push a button and make it trade in a negative and show you the actual sell on it i could actually make it do that but i want you as the individual okay because we thought about doing this <clears throat> just make it you know once it falls below 49 percent make it automatically flip itself but I needed you as, as, as the consumer, as the member, as the partner, as the investor, to be able to see this value. Because once you understand it, once you begin to see this, you begin to see it everywhere. In everything that you do. When I started trading with this, when I started looking at the value of the positive negative consequence on an algorithm, on something that, that works, I started to look at it on things like the dailies, the SR maxes, the intradays. I started to look on it, especially on the SR maxes, where you get a knowledge of a strong trade side and then it flips. I started looking at it as a scalping mentality of if, of if it's going to do that, where is it at in that relationship? Because we say 50% in the win loss ratio, but where could, where could an algorithm sit at in its plus or minus value? Because our plus or minus value right now is 50%. Okay, so if it's sitting at 60, you go with it. If it's sitting at 40, you go against it. If you had another line like this, the middle of positive or negative, positive or negative, may not be 50%. It might be 70%, right? So if a signal base is producing less than 70%, this line usually is, right? You ready for it? Is your break even. You ready for this, Mike? So if you're trading a system on 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 the net, right? You're trading, let's say you're trading the intradays. Right? In the intradays, you're usually buying on Nadex, you're usually buying them for say what? What do you usually buy them for? Seventy-eight bucks. Yeah, seventy-eight twenty-two. Right? Seventy-eight twenty-two. Where 
is your middle your middle line at? What number has it? Can anybody tell me? Where is your positive negative if your algorithm works? Can anybody can anybody see it? Can you see the value? You get it now? If your win or loss ratio, if your buying contracts are 78 to $22, 78 for the risk side, this is the risk, and this is your value, this is your reward, right? You need to have anything that if it's doing 78% or below, you need to do the opposite. And if it's doing 78% and above, you need to go with it. <coughs> Anybody see that? Any one of our signals can be done with that now. Hmm. Interesting. Do you know what else can be done with that level, Mike? Forex. Well, yeah, all of it. Five minute, one hour, two hour, wow. three hour. But you need to have a couple of things to be able to do that, right? And if you're doing like five minute, I don't, I don't produce down the results for five minute trades, folks. But if you, if you, if you were doing your journal and your success ratio was under 40%, then you've got a big problem. I haven't seen one under that, that, that low. I mean, I mean, I've seen a few people make a lot of mistakes. You have to learn how to stop that kind of stuff. But this kind of mentality, if you were covering, and I wouldn't say do it, try it for five minutes. Don't try to buy something for five minutes. I hear your brain already going like 62. No, 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 no. I learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but all of you have to know that the the value here of the plus or minus stuff this is not about showing you this process for everything that we do but for the forex side is the creating this value of the plus or minus as it were for you or against you and you need to see this you need to feel it you need to trade with it you need to keep that in your mentality because if not this equation that i put together to be able to give us that has has produced that value of the go with or go against mentality and everything comes back to the mean. That means that the, the value of it being successful or, um, or going against you, you know, if this is the 60 and this is the 40, it's always going to do this. Always. It's always going to return here into this value, into somewhere in here it's going to return. Somewhere, somehow, sometime. Your win-loss your process, the signal itself, it's always going to return. So the one thing you never trust is completely 100%, completely 0%, or 50%, exactly. Because you don't know which way it would go. Right? But these would be three great areas for what? That if you're trading on spreads, you would do a double bear box, bull box on 100% or close to it even above a certain certain amount, right? When it's exactly at 50% and was really close to the other end, when it's to the range of its movement, right? Because what do these become? Overbought and oversold areas? Yeah, yeah. You'll probably get that here soon. You'll see it. A lot of determination goes into this, of seeing the, the numbers there. So the algorithm, movement over time, price, we, we sort of covered this, the trend, these are the things that factor in the algorithm, and this will always remain consistent. As my gift to all of you <clears throat> is to have that availability, is to remain consistent and not change things around at the, at, at, at the drop of a hat. I'm not gonna give you a, and, and that's the other thing too, is that the algorithm all stayed the same. The way we trade them may be a little different, but the algorithms are still the same. They're range-based, they're time emergence, they're movements, they're, they're a few things in, in that factor, right? that hit us the signal. But we still use risk management, we still use these things, these consistent values, right? We learn how to make the recipe better, we're still making a cake, but we're still using the pans, we're using the, the measuring cups, we're still using the tools to get to that value. Some of the ingredients may change, but the values are still there, the way that we do them are still there. Of course, learning how to look left and find that structure is gonna be very important. This positive, negative design always needs data to be able to have, right? We talked about not having the 100% or not trusting the 100% zero or 50%, of course. 
in order to be able to trade this network, I'm speeding through some of this because I'm, I'm, I'm losing on time because I really wanted you to get that mentality there. Um, but Forex.com, the trading platform, we're not going to get any money from them. We're going to train you on their system. And I might put on, I don't know how fast, but the attaching the MT4, you can actually trade through MT4 on their system. But I think I want you to stay with their platform for now. As a novice going on, I want you to stay with their platform because they have some pretty cool tools over there. <clears throat> and I was showing Mike the other day using the chart, the trade, all that stuff. Uh, pretty powerful, right? And it's easy to use. Very easy to use. And it, it's complicated. It looks complicated when you first get there. But I'm going to teach you how to strip it all down to zero, right? And you're going to start from there. It's going to be pretty cool. You're going to see that. All right? Now, always keep in mind, making money in this very beginning part of the phase of doing, if you're trading Forex, if you're going to trade Forex, fuck, if you're trading anything, right? It's not about making money in the very beginning. What is it about? It's about the pips. It's about the pips, right? Can anybody tell me why it's about the pips? Anybody in the room? Can you tell me as an as an ending note here today? Come on, don't make me push this button before anybody answers. Why is it about the pips? Three, two, one. You're gonna kick yourself. Thor was gonna get it too. I knew it. Thor was Thor was writing in that last time. He's like, I'm gonna get it. Pips equals dollars. Yeah, that's pretty close. But it's all about the pips because. If you become positive at the end of the day on your pips, you're a success. Thanks, Gladys. Nice successful. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> but it's that consistent value of ROI, that consistent value of being ahead of the game. Because then you do what? Because it's not about it's not about the money itself, right? Because he keeps telling me this, guys. You listen to him. He keeps telling me this all the time. Because I, I equate it to money first. Right. Because here, because here's where all of you, right? And here's where you guys are like, oh, this is a cool algorithm, C, B, C plus B equals G. Okay? But listen, it really does it really does help your mentality because who's more successful? A guy who could trade 20 pips a day or a guy who does $200 a day? If a guy makes $200 a day, and this is the most, this is, this is what he can make, right? He's making $200 a day. He's fighting it. I won't even tell you how many pips he's making. But he's making $200 a day. Who can be, who's more successful? Anybody? 20 pips. $200 a guy a day. He did one trade for one lot, right? Then he went in and did two lots. Then he lost. Then he went back and did three lots. Then he won. And then he did, you know, he did a Hail Mary, he did six lots, right? And he traded all day where the guy who did 20 pips, he knows that he could do 20 pips every day. He might be only making two bucks. And then later on, as he, as he increases and done 10 lots, he can make 200. Now he's got to where this guy's at, but he gets even better and he does 20 lots. Now he's making 400. Because he knows he can do 20 pips. Now, this is just 20 pips. If you're looking at this, doing 40 pips is a version of adding more volume, but you got to get better. But being able to add a certain amount of pips to your repertoire only becomes relevant once you become more disciplined and secure with trading. This is, what, this is why I, I talk to a lot of people when they say, yeah, I, I was trading, but I was only making, I was only winning about trades a day or four trades a day. And then at four trades a day, I was only making $20 and I was making $80 a day. See, how many contracts are you trading? Oh, I was only trading one contract, but I can't live $80 a day. Oh, it's so tough. Quit your bitching. I'm telling you right now, if you don't follow this, this little equation here and get to that four or five trades a day. How many trades do you fucking need to win a day to make any money? No, it's not about the, it's not about the pip. It's about the win. It's about being positive on the win. It's about making the pip. It's about making the win on Nadex. It's about getting there. How many can you get to? Now, if you start trading spreads, there's another equation there, and then it becomes about the pips. It's not about the win. It's about the pip. Okay? All right. 
I gave you a lot of thought today. Mm -hmm. And you have to prepare yourself that you're going to, I'm giving you these thoughts. I'm giving you these ahas for a reason. You're going to learn a lot, but you're also going to, you might miss out on some because you're going to be engrossed in this solution for yourself now. You have to prepare for everything, anything, you know, whether or not you're trading Nadex or you're trading Forex or I don't know, you're trading baseball cards. It doesn't really matter. But the act of trading is a discipline. You have to become that. You also have to understand yourself and your situation well enough to know yourself well enough to be able to know when you're effing up. But be able to accept that and ask for help. Reach out. Keep a journal. Talk to Mike. Make a consult. Be a part. Be a part of your solution. Not the reason why you're not successful. I'm not a multi-billionaire. I'm just the average guy who's making it well enough to make it work for me. Now, in the last couple of weeks, I have not traded because of a few things that have been going. I've had a few trades and I haven't been trading like I want to, but I have not been trading because I have been busy building these algorithms and the systems and the solutions to get to a point that I needed to focus on nothing but that. I traded a few times, but I was distracted and pulled to the side. Didn't have a very good day the other day, <laughs> last week. I was very distracted with everything. So I have to get myself ready again in that position. But I'm not your leader. I'm not your, I'm not, I'm basically barely even a coach. I'm the person who's giving you the, hey, what's up in our system. And I want you to see that you are the only person that is responsible for your success and or failure. And I know that's tough to wrap your head on. But if you're ready, if you're really ready and you can really see it, you're the only one who can fix all the solutions and situations you're in. The one piece of advice I can give you is the last piece of advice is to never give up. I'm not talking about decks. I'm not talking about paying us money. I'm not talking about anything else, but it, just talking about you and your wants to be something more. Just never give up on that. <clears throat> I don't care if it's the last day on earth for you. You don't give up onto it because you never know. You know what giving up looks like. You know what that will result for you. Maybe that's why it's easy sometimes to give up because you know the result then. But what fuels me is knowing that I don't give up and I'm going to keep fighting for whatever I, 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 I have to have for me. I'm going to fight for it every single day. I don't sit behind excuse. And that's where some of you have learned to really take pride in yourself in that never giving up attitude. And that's, and I, and I want to surround myself. You are in good company. If you don't have a never give up, if you have a never give up attitude, you are amongst great company with myself, Mike, Amy, Brian, Thor, Paul, <laughs> we're 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 very good at not giving up. We're that frog choking that that stork. You ever see that picture? Hmm. We're that kind of mentality. And we're here. I mean, you have a question. Yeah. We're here to help. You know, you can you can call Absolutely. us. You can you can uh, reach out in the room. You could you could email us. I mean, I answer emails on the weekends. I don't know anybody else that does that besides Max. But I answer. You know, whenever you guys get to me, I answer or try to answer. And if I can't answer the question, I, I get it answered by somebody else. I'm not the technical guy, so don't ask me technical questions, but I am the guy that can help you if you're – no, I'm, I'm – <laughs> you laugh no, at that. I, mean, I can't no, help no. you with uh, – I, I can help you. I'm more, I'm more of the, um, the, the system guy. You know, I, I can help you. I can look at your chart and know what you're doing wrong immediately now, whereas I couldn't do that before. I think Mike I, says I, he's, I, not the, he's, he's not the tech guy, but – um, also answers tech questions every once in a while and does his thing. So he may not be the the the, the, the top tech guy, but he still is a tech guy now, whether he likes yeah. it or not. But I learned from the <laughs> uh, from the videos that I watched. You know, well, that's that's what it takes. Listen, at this time, I want to thank you all that are watching us after the fact. For we, we went a little bit further today, and I do apologize, but uh, I'm not really sorry. I'm happy, and I'm and I appreciate your mm -hmm. patience. But all of you in the room, normally I would have a uh, um, question and answers, but I have some stuff I have to get to. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. If you're watching, if you're in the room right now, you're, you're, you're here for that. You're here to make something better. And I know, I know for a fact that this is, this is where you need to be. 
if you want to be a trader, if you're trading at, at the levels, and you want to make it simple, I'm showing you as simply as I possibly can. So I hope to all see you in the, in the next webinars. And for all you watch this after the fact, thank you so much for being here. And as always, Mike, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Max. And uh, sharing your thoughts. Um, for everybody else, take care. And as always, trade well. I'm Max, and this is DexTrader.com. See you next time.